everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these cards and it's using the herringbone technique. And you're just creating the herringbone pattern. So it's they're really, really easy to do and they create really lovely backgrounds. And the great thing about these cards is they use up your scraps. So you don't need to chop into any of your, you know, nice big full sheets of paper. You can just go and raid your scrap drawers and you could do real clashing kind of styles, or in my case, I've stuck with the same paper packs and just use the scraps from those. So they're really, really nice. They've got all different designs. I've got, this is, um, I guess, the more true, true to uh, the style of the herringbone pattern. Um, and then you've got this one here, which is, a, I'd say, a larger style of the pattern. Um, sorry, not that one, nor that one. I think it's, yeah, these ones here, which to you looking at them, they probably all look the same, but I'm gonna be showing you this one, which is the, the I guess, the, the proper one. Um, but if I just bring it up, these are all separate strips of cardstock. So all of those are going in that direction. Um, and then you've got, probably best to show you here. So you've got one here, and then this one that comes down past it, and then this one comes up, and then this one comes down past it again and so on and so forth, and you're kind of working in like a point. Um, they're just really, really nice. You, you start off with a focal piece, so in this case I use this dark one. So these are the ones that I lay down first, and then you work out in each kind of section. So you have four sections, you have one, two, three, four, and that's in between these four darker ones here. And you choose whatever you want and you, yeah, there's again no real rule with it in terms of patterns that you use, you just use whatever you want and they're really, really nice. So there's that one there and then I've just added a nice little butterfly. These are all five by seven cards and I also, I, I also, I always like to do a batch of just quite simple cards. I didn't just need to add a butterfly to that one that are there for when I need to send a quick card or, you know, someone says to me, oh, I just need a, you know, um, just a really nice simple birthday card for, you know, somebody in work or you might be good friends with your postman, you know, just those kind of quick, quick cards when we just need to grab a card. These are handy to have. So I always like to make a batch just to keep at hand. So these are the ones I've gone for at the moment. So I'll pop them to one side. This, you do need a, a good cutting, I mean scissors are fine, the scissors are, are going to be completely fine, but I do find this trimmer, and this is the Tim Holtz mini uh, guillotine, is just brilliant for cutting real tiny strips, because you can make, you can have different strips when you make this card style, so that's what I'm going to be um, using throughout, and then I've used again, that's my card base, I've got my butterfly for later, that's the uh, the mirrored cardstock again that I've been using a lot. This is the Dovecraft A4 Premium card. And I'll, again, I'll share all of this in my blog. That's the paper pack, So, but I've used the scraps. So this is scraps that I'm using from the 12 by 12 and the eight by eight paper pack. So it's always nice to use those up. And then these are all the bits I'm gonna be using and for the double-sided sheets to show you the brand as well. So. First of all, you want to start off with a five by seven card base, if that's the size, any, in fact, any card this will work for. It doesn't matter what size card, any size card, but I'm using a five by seven. So that's my envelope. I've then cut this mat to go on top, which is that silver Miri card stock. And this measures, it's just a quarter of an inch down. So this is four and three quarters along the shortest side and six and three quarters here. Okay, and that means it will mat nicely on top of my five by seven, giving me that nice frame there. Okay, so that's that all prepped and that's kind of the last thing you do. In here, I've got my double-sided sheet, my little topper, and then these are all my scraps. Now I am gonna be cutting some more to show you, but I probably will dig in to these. And you use even these tiniest pieces as well. So, you know, do kind of keep them all because you, you'd be surprised how many bits you will actually use. So I've just got lots here and you can see a lot of this is the patterns from the ones before, but I'm gonna cut into, I want a bit more of that one there and I want to use this one here. And it's nice because, where was the other one? I think it was that one there. Yeah, you've got that pattern as well, the double side. So next you want to have a layered piece of cardstock to go on top of this again. So this one here will be four and a half by six and a half, and that will, you can see there, go perfectly on top, so they all sit together, 
giving you that. This is the top one here that's going to be what we're sticking everything on. It can be any coloured cardstock, so I've just got a dark teal here, this is just a strong cardstock, and I've covered it with a piece of double-sided sticky sheet. Now the ones that I use are the ones from Stick To Anything, and these are the A4 double-sided tape sheets. You get five, and I've always used these ones, they're really, really good. So what it is, is just imagine your double-sided um, sticky tape, your roll of sticky tape, but in sheet form. So, Said, I've already prepared it there but this here will have a tab on the far left okay you peel that piece and as you peel it off this whole side is sticky so whatever say this is my then piece of card you will then stick that over the top and just stick see I can stick that on there actually because that's got a shoot <laughs> I can just show you because I can stick it down pretend on this piece here because it's got that coating on it so it won't physically stick to it. So this is your piece that you've cut, you've got your double sided sheet and you've just taken off the backing there and basically you can stick that down, so pretend that we're sticking it like so, lift it up, pop the back, back down so it's all inside and then cut around it. That way you won't waste any of your double sided tape so you've got it all to save for another project. Now, luckily, obviously, that isn't actually going to stick to it because it's got the same backing. It's that backing that's still on that. So once it's stuck down, it will be covered. And then I can peel this top part here. If I can get into it. Peel that off, and that is now a big sticker. And that is what we're going to be using to stick all of our scraps on to create our herringbone look. So I'm now just going to sit that up there for the moment. Go back to this, pop all that to one side so I don't get any messes. And basically, now this is just entirely up to you how you want to, I'm gonna pop that there so I've got a bit more room. There we go. Um, entirely up to you. So I've got larger strips here. I think these are about three quarters of an inch. I've got ones there about half an inch. I've got a quarter of an inch. That's probably as small as I go is the, the quarter of an inch there. You don't need, there's no need to go any smaller. In terms of length, you want to kind of have it as long as you can with in terms of the scraps, um, just because you need to be able to get, one piece needs to be able to, well, it doesn't need to go from point to point because you can have it here if you want, but if you imagine they've got to cover at least half of that area. So I'd say you want them, yeah, six, six inches or less will be fine. You don't need any longer than that. But I'm just going to cut these strips here. So just with my trimmer, I'm not actually going to be using this side of the measurement. I'm just looking at what's overhanging here. So I'm going to do one that length, one a bit smaller, do another smaller one, another slightly bigger. I think that will be enough. And then I'm going to grab this one. Again, do one slightly bigger, thinner one, another thinner one. I'd say have a variety of maybe lights and darks because that way it will help to really bring out the print because as you can see there, having that dark and then the light against it, you can really kind of see the prints and I've got ones that are maybe a bit more plainer in terms of the pattern themselves. You can see the, the busier ones there with the butterflies. So, you know, you do wanna, I wouldn't say having it all kind of the same color or near to the same pattern, because you won't really then get to appreciate the, the technique that you're trying to do. So that's what you need to do. So you can see now I've just got a few varieties there in size and pattern and even colors. So you can see now if I was to put, you know, that against that, you know, you can see them more, and then if I had that dark one, you know, in between, you can you can really see the differences. So they're all now going to stay to one side, and then I'm going to grab my sticky sheet, and again, because I'm keeping mine all the same, so I'm going to start with this darker one. So it doesn't quite meet point to point. That doesn't matter, but you need to make sure that your you create your four sections first, and they need to be your middle piece needs to be the same and it needs to run off from one side to the other. So I'm going to stick this one down there. Okay, so you can see it runs off the side there and it runs off the side there and that's what you want. 
Then with this one, I'm going to, I'm just going to snip it in half. I actually think, oh no, I have another one there. It's all right, I thought I was running out of those ones. So then with this one, so you, you remember you want to create four sections. Oh, this is when you want to be careful you don't get your fingers stuck everywhere like me. So this one, I'm going to have my section there. So you want to kind of butt it right up to the other. This is the, I'd say the, the most crucial part of this technique is make sure you don't have any gaps. So stick that one down like so okay now if you don't have double-sided sticky sheet you can just cover this with double-sided tape you just want a sticky area and even wet glue wet glue will get a bit messy um, so yeah the double-sided tape I think is better in terms of you know less mess and then I want to create so I've got one two three I need to half this one well I say you need to it just makes it easier for the technique but you can again you can do loads of different things with it really, but for the herringbone, we'll stick to this way. So this one is gonna be like so. So there's now my four sections, one, two, three, four. And next, you just then wanna start building up your patterns. So again, no you know, um, rule. I'm gonna start with a lighter against the dark. So I've got this one here. It depends which way you wanna start. You might wanna do this one in that way. I'm gonna do this one this way, so. Once you see how to do it, you'll get how you know you can add any add, add any any way you want. Again, you want to make sure that you're not showing any of the double-sided tape underneath. Okay, so that's that one there. You can just get your bone folder there, and you can just you know really flatten it down. I tend to do that right at the end. So there's that one. Then the next one. So whatever one you lay down in that direction, you're then going to work from the opposite you know, side. So now I'm going to do this one, and you're going to butt it up against the one you've just laid down. And that will start to create the herringbone pattern. So then this one I'm going to pop in like so. Don't worry about all this overhanging, because we'll be trimming all that off at the very end. So now there's that one there. Then I'm going to grab this one. Not that one. I've got bits flying everywhere. This one is going to go in here. So see, it's nice to have all the different sizes in, in terms of width. So that one is going to go that way. Then I'm going to add in this one here. And you come back to this side. So you're just always working one way, then the next, one way, then the next. So again, always butting it right up to the next one. So that one there. Then I've got this nice, I might have to cut a few more strips of this lovely pearlized one. I love this one. And that one there. Like so. And then I've got this pattern here. I'll use that one. So again, you know, that one's quite a plain, darker purple. So then I've got this patterned floral next to it could do with something quite light again, so I'm going to go for this one here. And that one can go in like so. And then let's do, I've got this dark one here, like that. And then because you've got such a small triangle left at the very top, rather than getting really, really kind of thin pieces, I'm just going to finish it with... Um, yeah, that one. So I'm just going to put that one in the, in the same way, in the same direction. I mean, you can go that way if you want. Maybe I will. No, because it won't stretch. Let's get a bigger one then. Um, yeah, let's do this piece here. Get cover that whole little triangle at the end, like so. Okay. And that's what you'll have so far. And then we can just trim that. Now, I'm going to trim it now because I might want to use these pieces again in these smaller sections. Now, always when you trim, turn it over because that way you can get a really nice cut right against the cardstock and also it won't damage your scissors and get them in a mess. So you just basically just want to cut slightly on an angle. So you're almost cutting under the cardstock. And then you can use all these bits again, you know, on other parts of that card. So, and it's just a really nice technique to just sit down and do, like I said, with all your scraps, you need very, very few, you know, supplies to do this. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you don't have the double-sided sheets. So now already, can you see how lovely 
that pattern is and how we've got that section now done. So next I'm going to move around to this larger one here and again it doesn't matter how you start off but I'm going to add this really thick strip right down in the middle. Now I've got my sentiment going in the middle so it's going to cover a lot of it but you will see some poking out so that's why if you imagine that's going to be right over there you're only actually going to see that bit of it so that will fill a big gap. Then let's go for this one because it's got to go against that as well so now we're going back in this direction and if you do have any sticky exposed what you can always do is use your embossing buddy so just use some of your powder that you'd use for heat embossing just to go over and just to remove any tackiness that may come through if you've used your you know if the, if the sticky or the wet glue or anything is coming through then I'm going to use this one here so let's go for a much thinner strip like so I'm going to go for this darker one here that can go down because it's quite plain I need to go in a little bit there a bit much, too much of a gap like so but you can see how it is it's just really quite relaxing I enjoyed or I have enjoyed I have done this a few times before in the past and it is just a nice technique to do so that's that one and then what have I not used? I've not used this one. That one looks good against that real dark again. I don't think that was straight to start with, so it's coming. There we go. And then I'm going to use that one. I'm just going to pop the whole piece in just to fill that bottom triangle. So again, flip it over. Okay, and there's another section. And then I'm going to just carry on. So I'm going to speed up the video now and you can just watch me finish these two sections off. Okay, so there is our card base. I really, really like that. I think that's just such a nice, fun you know fun use of your scraps so next we just need to finish it off with some easy decoration so I'm going to grab my card base I've got some of this raffia here which I've been enjoying using so I've got this nice purple that matches really well so I'm going to with my red tape just run a strip Bring this down a little bit just so I can get it in the middle. So I think about there will do. Hold that both. Hold both sides around there and then just remove the backing. Just line that up nice and straight or as straight as I can get it there we go again it just gives a really nice texture if I bring it up there you can see it's not even it's all crinkled but it's just yeah just like it and then I've already just stamped a nice happy birthday sentiment there and just die cut it with my nest of uh, rectangle dies I've cut popped some foam adhesive on both there just to give it some dimension because obviously the card is very flat and then that one and just hold that up facing me I think I might go that way I think look about right over a little bit or is that got too late now is it gone oh no just saved it. I thought it needed to go across just a little bit. There we go, that will do. Like so. I've got my little butterfly. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of the tape again on the back because these are the little acetate ones. I always remove these from the sticker. They come with like a holographic sticker, which is pretty, but it's, I just, yeah, I prefer them without. I just think they look a bit more authentic and look like real butterflies. That's going to just stick on the top there. Okay. 
And then on the back of this, I'm going to just add some of my, I'm not going to use my wet glue. I haven't got my thicker red tape, so I'm just going to stick with this one. And I'm just going to pop a few strips on the back, which will be fine. Actually, I just realised I didn't even use that. I used double-sided foam tape, so I'm not even going to worry now. I won't take off the rest of that red. I'll just leave it on there. A little bit of wastage, but not too much. It was just the silver. Yeah, it was the silver one I stuck right down. I thought when I was doing it, I thought I'm sure I added foam anyway. At least I realised. So then these, these, this, I've done quite a lot of filming today, so let's just start from that side, make sure my border's right, and there we go. And again, look how nice that mirrored cardstock just frames it, almost just, yeah, like a little piece of art. And then these are top folding landscape card so now I'm just going to stick that down and I'm going to use my wet glue to stick this piece because it's quite heavy and I've got that little bit of wiggle room to get it in position like so and there you have it, a really nice card. And apart from speeding up those two sections, that's a real time tutorial. These take no time at all. And like I said, it's just really is a nice way of using up all of your scraps. And I've now one, two, three, four, five, six. I could keep going and make even more with the scraps that I've got, but it just shows, use what you have and you can create beautiful things. So I love these and yeah. I feel like I'm very organised at the beginning of the year, which is a nice feeling. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I've got to get a butterfly on that one before I forget. If you have, as always, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.